So we'll start with the simple question, what is 1 plus 1? Um, and this question is very relevant to sustainability. And normally, one would think 1 plus 1 is 2. Right? Uh, and that seems so obvious. However, in the context of our own living, 1 plus 1 is not 2. It could be 0. It could be 2. It could be 4. And as an example, uh, I'll use some concepts that come from yoga, which is a 5,000-year-old tradition uh, developed precisely for sustainability. Uh, sustainability becomes an important issue if our resources are limited. If we have unlimited resources, one may use whatever you want, and uh, if there are unlimited healthcare budgets, there's an unlimited war budget, unlimited education budget, unlimited fuel in the world, then sustainability is not that critical an issue. So yoga was developed for this particular, and so it's a very meaningful uh, philosophy and concepts and practice that precisely addresses the issues when resources are very limited, how do you live? And so that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, and of course, yoga, of course, uh, is a concept of philosophy, but yoga is coherence, right? So in, if one looks at uh, the meaning of yoga, it means coherence. And coherence is used in many different places not just what we understand as yoga. Coherence is used in technology. Uh, and I work in the field of technology. So when you buy an iPod, yoga has been used in the iPod. In other words, coherent fabrication, coherent manufacturing. So if you look at how we buy products, how products are produced, they are almost always produced by exactly the same principles that are used in yoga. Uh, yoga is more personal. So it's like to build yourself coherently. Uh, so when we consume something, uh, there are three kinds of actions we can take. And I would uh, give you a simple example. Uh, suppose you got up in the morning and you looked in your fridge and you saw that there was no milk and you jumped in your car, you went to the market, brought some milk. Uh, when you came back, you realized there's no bread. Uh, you jumped in your car, went to the market, bought some bread, came back, and then you realized there were no bananas. Uh, you jumped in your car, went to the market, bought some bananas, and you came back and your uh, the person you're living with said, well, you know, what about apples? And you jumped in your car. So that kind of a consumption is, even though it seems so silly, unfortunately, a lot of consumption falls in that category. Not precisely that, but that's an example. So that is what we call incoherent consumption, where your action is unrelated, so you're kind of mindlessly doing things. Uh, that consumption produces a lot of, and one plus one then does become two. Because to get milk and bread, you had to make two trips. However, we know, of course, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, for example, a coherent consumption would be, a yogic consumption would be, uh, you made a list of everything you needed before you went to the market. Of course, most of us do that. But going beyond, you went to your neighbor, and you asked your neighbor, you know, what do you need from, I have a car. The car can easily hold several hundred pounds of stuff. Why don't I take your list and I'll shop for you? Then you go to the next neighbor and you say the same thing. You know, I have a car. I'm going to the market. The market is maybe 10, 15 miles away. It has a great farmer's market. And I'm going there. I'll buy for you. And you buy for maybe a dozen families. That is coherent consumption. And you can see, in that case, the consumption of those 10 families suddenly drops because only one person, one trip is needed. And that is what yoga is. So yoga is applicable in many, many different levels. Uh, and I personally speak from my own experience. And I'll, ex I'll explain to you my own experience where I saw this happen, that this was the norm, where when you go shopping, you don't make a list for yourself. You make a list for the entire neighborhood. And then you go shopping. Okay? Now, that is something very simple. It makes a connection in your community. You get to know your neighbor. Uh, and when they go, they'll do the same thing. Uh, I grew up in New Delhi. So I was born r a little after India was partitioned. And my parents, who were at that time in Pakistan, uh, they were rendered refugees. So they came to India uh, because they were living in Pakistan. My, my grandparents had farms there. Uh, they came to India essentially penniless as refugees. Uh, and through the goodness of uh, a, a person, they and 40 other families were given one room quarters uh, to live in. And the size of the house was slightly bigger than this shed here. 
And that's where I grew up. Uh, and I stayed there till I came to this country. Uh, but what I observed was how did they live so well? Because if I look at my childhood and I look at what I ate, how I ate, what kind of uh, practices I did, and just a little before you heard the mind-body connection, all the education which came from my family, unfortunately not from schools, but the mind-body connection, and I realized they are using yoga in their everyday life. Now when we think of yoga, we think of postures, we talk, think of these very complicated postures that yogis take, but that is just a manifestation of yoga. Yoga is anything where your action enhances the previous action, enhances your fellow traveler's actions. So I remember as a child that my father would go to, with his bicycle, go to a, sh uh, a marketplace which is about 10 kilometers away. And before going, he would take orders and money from at least 15 different families. And he would come back on his bicycle carrying food for 15 different families. And the next week, the next family would do that. Right? And imagine the savings in your resources when you do that. So uh, if one looks at coherent consumption, one plus one is just about one. One plus one plus one is only one. One plus one plus one billion times may still be just a few thousand. So when we talk about sustainability, and that's a very important issue because China is consuming, India is consuming, Brazil is consuming, and the way we consume here, they will also consume. And if they consume incoherently, it's like I go to the market just for milk, come back, go to the market just for bread, come back. That's how our consumption is at this time. And if that kind of consumption continues, of course, there's no amount of resource in the universe. Even if we were able to get the resources from Mars and Venus, we still would not be sustainable because it's an unsustainable model. However, if we consume coherently, where one plus one plus one is just one, because we are consuming in a coherent way. Uh, and that's the message that comes from yoga. However, when we look at our manufacturing, so today you can go into Radio Shack or any of these uh, uh, electronics outlets, you can buy one billion transistors, right? You can buy a stick, you can buy a memory chip, and that has a gigabyte, which means a billion transistors for a few dollars. So through coherent manufacturing, companies can make one million transistors, imagine one million transistors in one cent, or less than a cent. You, you think, how is this possible? How can one million very complicated transistors be made in one cent? The reason is very simple, they use yoga. Right? Of course, it's not called yoga, it's called lean manufacturing, just-in-time dis delivery, it's called all kind of fancy names coming from technology but technology uses it all the time. So manufacturers have this great asymmetry between consumers and producers. So producers, almost all producers, whether it's Apple, or whether it's Walmart, or whether it's uh, uh, Toyota, uh, whether it's McDonald's, almost all production today is coherent production or yogic production, which means they almost use very little resources they produce a tremendous amount of output, and they produce also a tremendous amount of residue, right? which I'll explain in a moment. Uh, so consumer, on the other hand, is in a totally asymmetric position. And that's why the consumer's position is so weak, because we consume incoherently. So they produce coherently, we consume incoherently, because our consumption is very individualistic. Uh, so as I mentioned, it's unthinkable to think, well, you know, I'm going to the store, let me stop by my neighbor and ask them, what do they want? It's the same amount of fuel that you'll use to drive to the, but you'll double your productivity. So that is coherent use, and that's what I would encourage you to do. Those are very simple things. Then coming to your own coherence, we are totally used to falling sick. Right? So as you grow up, uh, it's just assumed that I'm going to fall sick. I'm going to catch a cold, I'll stumble, I'll fall down, my foot will break, ER is there, the hospitals are there. All of that is based on non-yogic thinking. Right? So in yoga, the thinking is the state of the human body is perfect, perfectly healthy. And the fact that you get sick is because you have lost coherence between your mind and your body, as, as, as the previous speaker just mentioned. So the sickness, the fact that I, my body is sick, I hurt, I have to lie down, I'm fatigued, I'm tired. 
and I get sick, a doctor has to fix me. The doctor gives me pills. I take this pill. All of that is an indication of incoherent. That means my body is not listening to my mind, and my mind is not listening to my body. That's the source of sickness, at least according to yogic thinking. So 90% of illnesses, which is one of the biggest unsustainable systems, so almost everybody understands that the healthcare is one of the biggest unsustainable systems. And it is unsustainable, uh, unsustainable because the way we treat our body is incoherent. It's not coherent. So if I am totally tired, my body is telling my mind, I'm totally tired, I'm still partying, right? I will get sick. So the connection between the mind and body is what yoga is. Uh, and in the technology field, Yoga is used, as I mentioned, to produce one million transistors in one cent. I'll describe to you an experience uh, that has been going on for 400 years in the city of Amritsar, which is in northern India, just at the border of India and Pakistan, just about 20 kilometers from there, uh, of the Golden Temple. The Golden Temple was established in 1577. Uh, at the time of the Mughal rule. And the purpose of the Golden Temple, among other things, was to bring people together and eat together. Right? So because food, meal, is a very important part of sustainability. How we eat is a very important part of sustainability. So in this Golden Temple, in an area which is about the size of this field, right? so about the size of this field, uh, roughly about 70 meters by 70 meters, 40,000 people are served meals every day, 40,000. So if you look at this crowd here, my guess is this is about maybe 300 people, a few hundred people. 40,000 people are served meals, nutritious vegetarian meal, every day for the last 400 years. So not once a year, not once a week, every day. So just imagine how it happens. And it happens through the concept of yoga, concept of what we call ekonkar, that is oneness among all. Right? Ekonkar, oneness among all. So in this temple, which is an ideal examination of coherence of community, people from all walks of life, all faiths, so Hindus, Muslims, Christians, and Sikhs, they gather together, they have a seat, they sit on the floor just like you are, and they eat this nutritious meal, and then they get up and they serve. So it's an opportunity for people to be served, to serve. They come up, they chop vegetables, uh, and the net result is because of this yogic coherence, I mentioned to you, one million transistors for one cent. The cost of the meal is 12, 12 cents. Of course, the meal is free, and it's up to you to contribute in labor, in money, in anything else you want. There's no donor for this uh, uh, occasion. There's no donor. Everybody comes, serves, and that's a donation. So service is the donation. So this kind of activity, which is coherent activity, produces a meal in a country that is so otherwise poor for last 400 years. And when you think of 400 years ago, the concept that people from all walks of lives, people of all castes, all skin colors, would sit down together and share a meal not only share a meal, cook a meal, and serve somebody else. So that is a way to break down barriers. And what I would encourage you, encourage myself, everybody else, uh, when you go shopping, how about shopping for your housemates? Some of you are students, right? You live together in a house. Some of you may actually live in a house. How about shopping for your neighbors? How about shopping for your classmates? How about shopping for the people in your office. Right? Because the cost of going that extra distance is zero. So what I mentioned, one plus one is one in that case. So if you, if you use coherence, the extra cost of people enjoying a good life is zero. So often we think of Indians and Brazilians and Chinese coming in and what will happen? And we are frightened. What will happen? And indeed, if the consumption is incoherent, it is frightening. Healthcare is frightening. So we have $1 trillion being spent on healthcare for reasons which are really non-existent. Other than 5 to 10% of illnesses that are genetic, almost everything else your body is telling you, do this to save me, but the mind is ignoring it. So one of the activities of yoga is to connect the mind and body so intensely 
that even if your little toe is telling you something, you're listening to it and you're paying attention to it and you're responding to it. And if you do that, you'll be surprised there will be no illnesses in your life. When you're eating, you're listening to yourself. Is my stomach full? And you're paying attention to yourself. Uh, and I'll end by describing uh, what in yoga is the seven layers of good life. Because why do we consume? The reason we consume is we want a good life. So what is good life? And for every one of us, first we have to think, what is good life for me? So yoga suggests, this, this concept suggests seven kinds of good lives. First, physical wellness. My body should be in such fine condition that I should not feel my body. If you're feeling your body all the time, you're not in very good shape. So the body should be so good in shape. So first, just our animal nature. We are animals. Our body should be in great shape. Second, we should be able to create something every day. Every day we should be able to create something. That could be a meal, could be a painting, could be a poetry, could be prose. Could be just coming and admiring a tree, like this beautiful tree, and imagining something. Right? So second is creativity. Third is balance, living a balanced life, which means I have friends, I can intellectualize, I have a social role, I'm respected in the society and I respect others. The fourth most important is loving and receiving love. Right? So that's good life, loving and receiving life. Living in a situation where people love me, I let them love me and I love back. Right? That's a very important part. The fifth one is free expression, being able to express yourself, what is in your mind, not holding back, not being fearful of authority, right? challenging authority. So that's the next one. The one after that is meditating so you know who you are. Understand your uniqueness. All of us are unique. All of us are unique. And expressing and nurturing your uniqueness. And the final one, which is the spiritual good, well, uh, good living, is seeing yourself in others. Seeing yourself in others. And those are the seven layers. And none of them require high level of consumption. And all of them, if every one of the six billion people on the world had those good lives, there would be no extra consumption because none of them, the seven layers I mentioned, none of them require high consumption. So that's what I would encourage you and leave you with that thought. Uh, the concept of yoga, so learn about yoga, but to practice yoga, just do this one little thing. Next time you go shopping, shop for somebody else also. Right? Not that you're giving them free, because they can still pay you, but you're saving so much. And that starts, in pr starts a process of living in a coherent way. So with that, I'll thank you and 